Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodwin. No, there we have John Lewandowski. How you doing, John? Hey, pretty good. I'm doing all right myself. Got a little congestion thing going on here and up here, but I'll be all right. All right. Eh, that and my hat don't want to fit right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, 2002 West Tard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. All right, I've had it with the hat. <laughs> mm. And yes, that is some level of skill to where I can make the hat if I lean back far enough a prop. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, the Admirals took on the Iowa Wild for the third game in the row. The uh, other game we should be covering, and I use the word should because it should be still going, uh, would be the Preds and Flames, but uh, that game was canceled due to COVID protocol. Um, we will update more on that in the morning if we know more beyond tomorrow. Right now, we currently sit as we play whew, Thursday, um, if I remember that correctly. Sorry, folks. Checking the schedule for you guys. Uh, yes, we would play the Avalanche Thursday. There is no guarantee this game is going to happen. Uh, rumor mill going very heavy. Um, anyway, before I get into this, shots were 44 to 26 for Iowa. I, uh, e shots were nine apiece, even in the first. In the second, it was 16 to 11. In the third, it was 19 to 6. In the first period, the only goal scored was a shorthanded goal by Matthew Olivier, his second of the season unassisted. Um, that was during the Igor Afanasyev double minor. So not only did he do it under unassisted, he kind of dug uh, Igor out of a hole there. Right. Even if they got one during the rest of that power play, it, it wasn't as bad for them. So. Right, it wasn't. Um, but that's not the case because that's the only goal scored in the first. Uh, however, Josh Healy interfered two minutes. Nate Soucis, two minutes holding. Matthew Olivier, two minutes roughing. Marco Rossi, two minutes roughing. Marco Rossi, two minutes hooking. That's okay. That would put it at Admiral's three power plays. Oh, no. Admiral had two power plays in that period. In the second period, scoring was Cole Schneider for his ninth goal of the season in his 600th game with an assist from Cole Shearwood and Graham Not. <laughs> Graham not signing an uh, uh, SPC contract uh, the other day, uh, but, which means he will remain with the Admirals for the remainder of the season. Definitely showing up to work today. Um, then scoring at the 520 or 529, 429 mark was Joe Hicketts. I don't like you, sir. I don't mind the other two that were with him, but hit him just like I said in the last two videos with the Iowa Wild. I, there's something about Hickett. I just don't like him. I, I don't want to be the one to outright call him a dirty player, but that's kind of what I think. Right. You know, it takes cheap shots, and then when the guy goes to fight him, he runs away. You know. Yeah. He did that in Grand Rapids too, so I didn't like him there either. So it's not. This is not a just a. It just started thing. Uh, he was assisted by Mason Shaw and Marco Rossi. Rossi is going to be a very good hockey player down the line. Uh, then scoring at the 631 mark was Cole Schneider with his 10th of the season with an assist from Graham Not mm -hmm. And Frederick Allard, his third. Good to see Frederick Allard finally getting back in the assist category, moving the puck a little more. Ever since this team's got healthy, they've gotten a little more dangerous, too. Yeah. 
Um, then at the 844 mark, who else but Cody Glass? Cody Glass has been starting to shoot the puck, and that is his fourth goal this season with an assist from Rocco Grimaldi, his fifth, and Matt Donovan, his eighth. Uh, in the second period, Joseph LeBay had an interference call, Adam Beckman holding, Grant Bisbash hooking, Cole Sherwood holding, and Kalen Addison ho ho hooking. The third period, um, during the break, Matt Tennyson, uh, right going into the third, was disputing a call against Cole Sherwood for holding. Um, that did not sit well with the refs. And we will explain that later because at the 424 mark, Matt Donovan got a tripping call. Mitch McClay got a hooky call. Matt Tennyson got an elbow. Two minutes for elbowing, which he didn't elbow him. He cross-checked him. So I'll correct you there. Just so if you want the correct call. And then uh, Tennyson also got a two-minute unsportsmanlike conduct <laughs> disputing a decision. The Admiral's bench at the eight. 1953 mark was also served with an abuse of an official uh, bench miner served by Grant Mishmash. Scoring in the third was Joseph Cremarosa, his fourth with an assist from Nick Sweeney, his eighth, and Keaton Thompson, his first. Uh, that was at the 723 mark. At the 1031 mark, Joseph Labate scores his fourth with an assist from Cole Smith, his seventh. Um, then shorthanded, uh, Anthony Richard scores his third. Welcome back, Rishi, by the way. Uh, uh, Richard back from his injury with uh, against Rockford, uh, if you guys remember me talking about that. Um, a shorthanded goal uh, with an assist from Matt Donovan is ninth. Then at the 16-24 mark, uh, Iowa finally gets a power play goal. Joseph Cramarosa is fifth with an assist from Nick Sweeney is ninth. And Joe Hickens is 11th. The Iowa Wild were one for 11 on the power play. Right. How bad do you got to be? Hi, Tony. <laughs> that cat's in love with me, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> Lay down, girl. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, 24 penalty minutes on 11 infractions, including basically abuse of an official, disputing a discussion, but like either disputing a decision. Right. You know, I, I just don't understand it. Yeah, I don't either. I was I was shocked at how many penalties there were. Yeah, and and a lot of them were nothing calls. Right. Like there was nothing there to call. So um, we're gonna take a look at the at the three stars of the game real quick. Connor Ingram is the third star with forty one saves on forty four shots. Uh, Joseph Cabarrosa with two goals is the second star. And the first star of the game was Cole Schneider on his 600th game, getting two, two goals. By the way, I think that if you were to move Connor over to second star, the Admirals PK should get that third star. They did a wonderful mm -hmm. job. They absolutely did. You get two shorthanded goals and you keep them for one for 11. Right. A double digit penalty kill. Yeah, you're you're just not gonna have that kind of night again. Right, you're not. Uh, you're up, uh, the attendance at the Wells Fargo Arena was three thousand two hundred eighty-eight. Uh, referee was Samantha Hiller. Last time she we saw her was with the Chicago Wolves. Uh, referee also was Cody Beach, former Chicago Wolf, brother of Kyle Beach, uh, former Rockford Ice Hog. Um, linesman was Sam Rankin and Jared Cummings. Or Cummins. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, the Admirals are up next. Uh, our, our next opponent will be the, the certainly dreaded but not feared Chicago Wolves. Right. Um, the Wolves play Thursday against Manitoba in Chicago. So they got to play and then travel. Uh, good, but good part for them, and the only upside for them is that they will be at home during that stretch. 
Um, uh, Manitoba will then travel to Iowa to play there. Um, and uh, Rockford will take on Texas around the AHL right now, just today alone, the uh, Hershey Bears beat Wilkes-Barre Scranton four to one. That game is final. Um, the Charlotte Checkers beat the <laughs> Rochester Americans 11 to one. Wow. Um, the uh, uh, Henderson Silver Knights, uh, take beat the Tucson Ro is that the Roadrunners? The Roadrunners, yes. Okay, the Tucson Roadrunners four to three. Um, around the NHL, uh, the Adver uh, the Predators game, like I said earlier in the show, was postponed. Um, but around the NHL today, uh, the uh, Colorado Avalanche beat the Rangers. The Toronto Maple Leafs beat Edmonton or are beating Edmonton four to one. Colorado is winning four to one. Uh, Columbus is winning three to one. Vancouver just scored literally. It just changed on the screen. <laughs> okay. Uh, Seattle scoreless at the end of one. Vegas four to one final. Uh, Tampa Bay beat LA three to two. And Ottawa beat Florida eight to two. Um, the uh, Flyers beat New Jersey six to one. Uh, Pittsburgh beat Montreal five to two. Detroit beat the Islanders two to one. Buffalo beat Winnipeg four to two. And the St. Louis Blues beat the Dallas Stars four to one. Nashville's game was postponed along with the Carolina Minnesota game. Uh, on the docket tomorrow, for anybody looking for uh, a, a game to watch, uh, you, games to watch, you have Washington versus Chicago, <laughs> the Rangers in Arizona, and Seattle and Anaheim. Um, also, kudos to Yuko Pekka Luka Linen. Please don't ask me to say that three times fast on his first NHL win. Also, uh, Hudobin clears waivers. The um, uh, uh, stick taps to Ben Bishop. His knee is done. I tried it all. I, I, I have to retire, so Ben Bishop is done. Um, beyond that, the Everglades play tomorrow. And currently, oh wow, um, currently as it sits, uh, the oh, ECHL announces postponements. Let's see where that goes. Yeah. All righty, so transactions first off and foremost. Um, the Everblades have nothing there. Uh, postponements. Uh, the Newfoundland at Adirondack games have been canceled due to the league safety protocol. Um, the Everblades will take on the Atlanta Gladiators. Um, I had something else for you guys. Oh, yeah, the All-Star game. Ooh. There we go. Read article. All right. The what? Uh, ECHL to partner with the Professional Women's Hockey Player Association. Two members from each organization will participate in the 2022 Warrior ECHL Classic on Monday. 
January 17th, live exclusively on the NHL Network. Mm -hmm. uh, Lauren Gabriel and Sophia Shaver, uh, Julia Dempsey and Allie Thunstrom. We'll all get a chance. Um, oh, at the Premier Hockey Federation and the Professional Women's Hockey Players Association. Okay. Um, that is really cool that they're getting that, that opportunity and me and yeah. Jim will definitely be watching. <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, that is an opportunity. You don't get to see all that often anymore. Right. You know. Um, and other news. Um, I, I, I just wanted to circle back to something because something I just read made me kind of chuckle. Um, looking at the um, power play versus shorthanded goal situation, uh -huh. we would have still won. Just take all the other goals we scored out of the game and just put the shorthanded goal and the one power play goal, we still win. Right. That's nuts. It is. It's like, okay, you're calling penalties and it's not working. Now, I do feel bad in some senses for the refs in some cases, but in this one, it's just like, okay, I felt bad for the female ref. She got kind of caught up in some mess. Yeah, I saw that. But other than that, it wasn't like a intentional mess either she, he went to hit somebody and she was kind of sandwiched yeah but uh thank you guys for watching um me and john will be back at our earliest convenience of whenever we can cover a game it may be tomorrow for the everblades pending news pending news because given our current schedule pending news um so uh please bear with us folks we're we're kind of we only work with what we got so right um we may be back tomorrow we may be back thursday we are not sure at the current moment 100 percent. thank you guys for watching this has been from milwaukee to nashville brought to you by the wonderful folks at hockey locker thank you and have a happy holidays and a merry christmas